Even the BBC had to apologize for this noise. It happened during a similar occasion, the filming of a documentary on ancient Greece starring Bedany Hughes, who was experienced enough in film production to know that no sound engineer would ever be able to remove the penetrating voice of the Greek cicada, or the lyric speech Lebel. Because while all countries have a bug named cicada, as expected, Greeks have the largest in Europe. And despite its lyrical sounding name, the actual sound produced by this incredible insect can ruin an entire film shoot, exactly as it did for us on more than one occasion. Even before the invention of modern cameras, however, the Greek cicada, or zizikas in the language of his compatriots, was surrounded by legends. Legends that touch on the core of human desires, infusing them with a distinctly Greek sense of tragedy. Legends that explain why it's near impossible to separate the frequencies of this bug from those of the human voice. Legends that eventually force one to forgive this insect for the many millions in damages. Yep, other play. Even the BBC had to apologize for this noise. It happened during a similar occasion. You would think that by 2021 there would be a button for everything, but there isn't. At least one to remove the noise of this insect from my voice. Unless, of course, you have hundreds of thousands of professional equipment, which we don't. Which, by the way, reminds me that you can now support us on Patreon and any support would be welcome. But until then, let's see what we can do with what we have. The filming of a documentary on ancient Greek starring Bethany Hughes, who is experienced... Isn't there a button to just take this noise away? I wish there was. What would happen if you just tweaked your, your, your magic controls? I could make your voice and the cicadas disappear. Together. Together. Right. Uh, we wouldn't want that, no. Sound engineer would ever be able to remove the penetrating voice of the Greek cicada. Let's go back to our story. As a child, I was told a story called The Grasshopper and the Ant, which I later discovered had come from Aesop, the most celebrated fabulist of ancient Greece. Like with so many other things borrowed from ancient Greece, however, this little story too had been corrupted, as in the original Greek it features a tetix, a cicada, in the place of the grasshopper. Thankfully, the rest of the story is largely intact. The cicada is presented as an easy-going party bug, lazy enough to refuse any type of work other than singing merrily throughout the summer months. More than that, the cicada tries to lure the ant away from its great project of building a home for the winter months, tempting him with the easy pleasures of summer. The ant stays true to its goal, and when winter came, the cicada laid freezing in the cold, while the ant was tucked nicely inside his new home. In the original story, the ant is actually shown to be a bit of a jerk, as he is heard mocking the cicada, which laid freezing outside, saying, Were you not singing throughout the summer while I was working? Well, now you can start dancing to keep warm. And while this myth explains why during winter we can actually film outdoors without this nuisance, it does not give the full length of the bug's tragedy. But centuries before Aesop composed his fables, another story was told. The story of Tithonus, found in the Homeric hymns that are some of the earliest samples of Greek poetry. There we hear that Once Io, goddess of dawn, fell madly in love with the beautiful young Trojan. Tithonus, his name was, a man like the gods, the poet says. Dawn 
begged the storm-clad son of Kronos, mighty King Zeus, to make her lover immortal so that she could live with him forever. Zeus gave his consent, fulfilling her wish, and so Tithonus lived by ocean stream at Earth's edge, making love to Earth-born Io, goddess of dawn, in her golden throne. But foolish Dawn, she had forgotten to ask from Zeus to also keep her lover young. And so, when hateful old age weighted him down and he could no longer move his limbs to dance with her, Dawn placed him in a chamber in her palace, shutting the doors behind him, while his voice flowed like an old man's chattering without end. Finally, the gods took pity on Tithonus, who grew older and older for a whole eternity, and transformed him into a cicada, a wrinkled old insect that cannot stop chattering away its sorrows in a human voice, which explains why it's so damn difficult to separate it from our voice. In later years, the story would develop something of a cult following, not among sound engineers, but among poets. A newly discovered poem by Sapfo mentions Tithonus in reference to the story, while centuries later, in England, Lord Tennyson wrote a poem where a Trojan prince is heard begging the goddess of dawn to release him from his immortal life. The woods decay, the woods decay and fall, and after a many summer dies the swan. Me, only cruel immortality consumes, I wither slowly in thine arms, here at the quiet limit of the world. And who knows, perhaps this story was the secret theme behind one of the most beautiful huapangos of Mexico, La Cigarra, another name for that curious little bug that is somehow related to immortal old age. And here is a curious fact, the songwriter, who is still alive today, Raimundo Perez y Soto, was born in 1910, meaning that, yes, he is currently 111 years of age, which makes him a modern-day Tifanus. Marinero, marinero, dime si es verdad que sabes, por qué distinguir no puedo, si en el fondo de los mares hay otro color más negro que el color de mis pesares. Ay, la, la, la. negro que el color de mis pesares.